Continuing with the lab tour now, let's have a look at the Senior Design Project Laboratory. And here it is. It's nice and clean right now because the spring semester just ended a few weeks ago, so I got all the tables pretty well cleared off, or at least I got the students to clear off the tables when they were done with all their projects. And the biggest thing, the big elephant in the room right here, the Micromouse Maze. I think I built this maze in around 2007 or so. There was another Micromouse Maze that was here uh, when I first started working and the students had built it and they did a real shit job of it because they put together nine individual segments and they drilled all the holes in each segment and then they put the pieces together. And of course, the, um, the precise 18, 18 centimeter spacing didn't line up on the holes in between the segments. And it was just complete crap because the, the wall pieces didn't fit at all. So what I did is I made it into two individual sections. There was a five foot by 10 foot section. Here's another five foot by 10 foot section split all the way down the middle joined together with C clamps so there's only one division here between the two pieces and I also did a very careful marking of exactly where all the holes should go and very carefully drilled them to try to keep that 18 centimeter spacing as close as possible like within plus minus half a millimeter that's the kind of tolerance I was looking for I think what I really achieved was plus minus one millimeter but a lot better than what it was when I first started working here. And also, since it's in two halves, we got wheels mounted on the side of it, so if we need to transport it, which we certainly will need to transport it going to the new building, just break it apart in half and stand each side, stand each piece up on end and wheel it over there. And the base of it is a couple of ping pong tables. So these are also easy to, to fold up and wheel over there. Here's some examples of some micro mice left over by the students. They, this one has a 3D printed chassis here. The blue, the blue plastic is 3D printed and of course you got Arduino on top. Oh and I think the Arduino holder, that looks like it's 3D printed as well. It's got the little dinky motors down here and, and the ultrasonic transducer holders. I guess those are 3D printed as well. We just got a new 3D printer about a year ago in the mechanical lab. So students have been utilizing that quite well. And then over there in the middle, that's another one built up from a kit. And I've got these, these long arm pick sticks here for students to grab it if they are so fortunate that their mouse actually makes it all the way to the middle of the maze because that's actually very difficult and I should probably say that if you're unfamiliar with the micro mouse competition the point is to make a autonomous robot that navigates itself through the maze from one corner and end up in the center of the maze and you get points for that and if the motor makes its way back to the starting point and there's extra points for that our students compete every year at the IEEE student activities conference for region 2 which is eastern U United States area sometimes we get some some placement like first second third place and sometimes we don't it all depends on how good the students are at building their little robots and then there are some other projects left behind by students over the years. Usually when they get funding from the university, then they, they, they build it and they leave it here since officially, since it's bought with Penn State money, then it becomes Penn State property. And other students can work on it and build upon the progress of what was left behind. In the case of this one is a control system, a simulated little house here, a bunch of dollhouse furniture, even a little 
tiny TV. This is actually an electronic picture frame that's uh, stuck up here on the wall, but it fell down. And it really turns on and it shows a little slideshow of pictures when you turn everything on here. A very cute little installation. But anyway, these are real working lamps. And there's, I think, and we got a lamp up there. And also, down in the middle of the floor somewhere, there's a, a light sensor. Oh, and also the shades. There's some shades that go up and down. And we got a couple of lights out here to simulate the sun. So basically, this, this whole thing varies the, the light varies the, the lamps inside and it varies the, the height of the shade to maintain a constant level of brightness on the inside of the room no matter what the lighting conditions are outside. And we have a very similar project that was just built this past spring semester. Got another house put together with cardboard and duct tape. But all the electronics are the important thing of course. And in this case, we've got a simulated sun right here and smart glass material. This is LCD liquid crystal material that changes. Um, if you apply 60 or 70 volts AC, then it turns from milky white to completely transparent like glass. And it looks like on the inside, they just have some white LEDs stuck through the cardboard in various locations. There's a couple more on top. So certainly no dollhouse furniture in here. But anyway, it's the same concept to keep a regulated level of brightness inside the building no matter what the lighting conditions are outside. And over here, from about a year ago, we have a voice to braille system. This is just the, the braille producing part and the braille letters are actually much larger than in reality. Basically, the students were investigating an alternate method of making these braille dots go up and down. So what they used is muscle wire, all these very fine strands of muscle wire. So you turn on one strand of muscle wire and then it pulls and we got a bunch of click pin segments in here. So I guess, so there's up and there's down. They're not all perfectly lined up, of course. There, that one looks better. Unfortunately, though, the problem with this nitinol muscle wire is that it reacts far too slowly. It may take a couple seconds to heat up and build up enough tension to pull on the click pin, and then again, even longer time to cool down and release it. They also have over here a more traditional method using electromagnetic solenoids, so of course these would act instantaneously for pushing the pins up and down. And again, this is just proof of concept. These are certainly far too big to be used as real braille letters. Back here we got some energy harvesting stuff. We got a vertical wind turbine with a small little three-phase generator right in here. Puts out about 12 volts. It puts out 12 volts or something like that when it's spinning really fast. And then this styrofoam container here, just a, a peltier junction to simulate. There's a, there's a resistor simulating a heat source right here, of course. And then you would keep a bunch of cold water on the other side of the peltier junction. And so you could harvest energy that way if you have a temperature differential. Got some more stuff here. This is a search and rescue robot with the uh, arms that go up and around like that so it can climb over big piles of rubble or go upstairs or any, something like that. It's a huge beast. I think the, here's the two main motors here. I think these are windshield wiper motors to drive it along. And of course it needs batteries too, but I, they're lead acid batteries and they're long gone. We've got a UAV right here, Arduino and breadboard and slot for the battery to go in here. I don't think it was ever airborne because you can see it's attached to the, the base still, but I think the, the students were just aiming for stability first before they actually would have taken it off the base and tried to get it to fly. And finally, one more project that 
one of our students is still working on it right now. It's a, it's this thing right here, this big snake thing, an endoscope. You can turn the knob here and then the end effector goes around. So this will be used for colonoscopy, something like that, probably discharged from, the, I'm sure it's been sterilized and it's discharged from the hospital probably because it got this kink right here so they didn't want it anymore anyway what he's working on here is some kind of system that would allow the doctor to to know precisely the the exact location and orientation of the end of the endoscope because that's always been a problem is knowing exactly where the end of the endoscope is inside somebody's colon everything looks pretty much the same the whole way through and you really have no idea where it is other than other than by looking at the markers up along the length of the insert so that's a quick look at some of the projects that the students work on over the years here's a look at the rest of the room we got these cabinets seven of them, seven of these small cabinets here for students to store their equipment and parts in them. I sign, I sign them out keys for them to use for the semester and they can keep all their stuff safe and secure inside these cabinets. This one is typically the micro mouse cabinet so any, any kind of micro mouse project I automatically assign cabinet number one. And here's another pencil sharpener on a big old transformer this one an oil burner ignition transformer and we just got some drawers of capacitors and resistors here an LPKF prototyping machine for milling circuit boards that hasn't been set up yet just haven't had the time this past semester so hopefully next semester I can get it up and going also have a regulated temperature hot plate here for some surface mount stuff some rudimentary tools, drill press, and a, a scroll saw, vice grip, and of course got a cable rack over there by the windows. This one is actually a coat rack. See here's the, the holes for the umbrellas right here, and so it's just the base and the pole of a coat rack that used to be here, and I took the top of it off and put a plank of wood and bunch of cable hanging stuff up there. Got a small bookshelf just for catalogs and reference books down here and of course and of course no electrical lab would be complete without some books by Forrest Mims. And so that's it. Really not much going on in here now but of course it is summertime. Usually it gets really, really messy here in the spring semester. Not so much in the fall semester because there's only a handful of senior projects, but around springtime there could be as many as 10 or, or a dozen projects going on in here all at the same time. Now this room wasn't always a senior project design lab. Back in 1987 it was a computer lab for the electrical, en electrical engineering students. Here's some photos of what it looked like back then and how they compare to today. And finally, here's some more before and after pictures comparing how it looks today to how it was eight or nine years ago with pictures that I took myself. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later.